two, one, we're on. Welcome to AHA! <laughs> Remember what it means? A human among humans. A That's what we've been talking about. Humans. That's been my goal, and thanks to Tim Ahern and Pamela Guy, I'm getting closer. <laughs> we talk about humanity. We have a show for you about one of the most unique and richest books certainly written in the 20th century, probably ever written, Finnegan's Wake. And we've been reading it together for 15 years, 15 every, years. every season. <laughs> and Tim has written a book, really two books about it. What's the, what's the big green one called? Uh, 17 Improvisations on a book by James Joyce. Yes, and it's wonderful because you can, now you can understand what's going on. Tim's going to tell us a little about Finnegan's Wake, and then we will all tell you why we have been devoting 15 years of our life to it and why we love it. So uh, briefly, the book, <clears throat> although it spans all of human history and many of the languages that the human race speaks, uh, it can be described as a story about a family. Uh, there's, a, there's a husband, there's a wife, they have three children, um, two are boys, they're twins, and they seem to be polar opposites of each other. And there's a daughter named Issy. The boys are named Shem and Sean. The, the mother is called Anna Olivia Pluribel, and the husband is Humphrey Chimpton Earwicker. And um, <clears throat> looked at from that perspective, it seems that the father is probably asleep during the entire book, and he's maybe dreaming about the family as well as all of human history. And he, all of his human desires, much like you might think of the subconscious taking over in sleep, uh, seem to come to the fore. And he is constantly in struggle with his sons. He is desiring his daughter. He, um, he is uh, very lascivious about all of the neighbors. Uh, uh, everybody, you're basic, you're basic American family. You're basic family. <laughs> And uh, this goes on and on for hundreds of pages, uh, taking different forms, different characters come up to the, you know, to the highest level and duke it out, and then they'll be subsumed, and then some other aspect of this family um, uh, comes comes above <clears throat> the others. And by the end, uh, it seems that the dream is coming to a close. The children are getting restive in their beds. They're actually small children. Uh, the mother goes to comfort one of them because he seems to be having a nightmare. And then the sun rises and it hits the eye of the father and it seems to wake up the father from the dream. Uh, and this is just the simplest of interpretations. There are so many other levels. Yes, and it's the to. last, maybe the last one, there's this famous song that gave rise to the, both the title and in some ways the structure of the book. Right. So. Uh, uh, very central to the book is the fall of man, uh, similar to the fall of Adam. Uh, but in this book, it concerns a song called Finnegan's Wake, and it's about somebody who's building a wall. I think it's a song that originated in New York, actually, among Irish uh, immigrants. And uh, anyway, he falls down, he dies. The a wake is called. He's laid out by his friends, and then they start carousing at the Irish wake, and before you know it, uh, drinks are being thrown, people are arguing, and one of the bottles, I think it's of Jameson whiskey, hits him in the head, crashes anyway, and the fluid falls all over him, and he wakes up and he says, he curses them all, he says, and a muck on doodle, did you think I'm dead? <laughs> and uh, so there you get a sense of sort of like, uh, not only the fall of man, but uh, Christ's resurrection. It's all told in very um, uh, humanistic terms because it uh, you know, concerns liquor and, yeah, we all uh, can. and an accident. Yes. A little Jameson, resurrection, hooray, surrection, which just has a duff, another meaning, right? Hooray, insurrection. Hooray, surrection, yes. Yes, but, but the hooray part of it. What a way to be a revolutionary. <laughs> so we've picked, for your enjoyment, Virginia, Virginia not Virginia, um, Columbia watches us from West Virginia. Oh, how good. Oh. Yes, you can tell all your friends, you can see us online, at seven o'clock, go to CCTV and press live stream, and they'll catch us. 
That's it. Anywhere in the world. But Pamela has picked to start with one of the passages from Finnegan's Wake. And we're, we're not so much going to tell us tell what it means, but what it means to us. Why we've been uh, Finnegan's Wake junkies for so long. Well, I, um, I don't know if I'll accept that <laughs> the junkie <laughs> title. But, but I will, yeah. I will uh, accept the title of, of Great enthusiast mm -hmm. and um, I was uh, talking to Michael and Tim earlier and saying that when I read the wake aloud or when I hear it read aloud I feel so alive and so vibrant and it there's something about the energy and the wordplay and the fun and and you'll hear some of it in what I've chosen to read I've chosen to read something about the two brothers, um, and Shem sort of represents James Joyce and Sean, his brother, and here is Sean lecturing Joyce, or Shem. So Sean is the middle class brother. That's right. He, he's the burger. Yes. And, and, <laughs> and he's the one that sent, actually sent James Joyce money. Yes. Uh, and Shem is Joyce, and he's Shem the pen man. And he's the artist. Yes, and we, we, we made a rule that you can't be in the group. We haven't kept it. You can't be in the group unless you have a brother like Sean who's doing very well. He's supporting And will That's lecture true. you about how you should be living. That's right. Mm. So here's part of a lecture. And it really, it really uh, takes the theme also of Joyce being Catholic, having renounced the church, but always living with it, always working with it, always working with a concept of sin. So here, here is the lecture, or part of it. From the, from, the, from the successful brother, right? From the successful brother. Yeah. Let me see. It is looking pretty black against you, as we suggest, Shimovic. <laughs> you will need all the elements in the river to clean you over it all. And a fortifying Pope's priest power bull of a tender to Booth. Let us pry. <laughs> wow, I should always love that. We thought, would, and did. You were bred, fed, fostered, and fattened from holy childhood up in this two Easter island on the pie jaw of hilarious heaven and roaring the other place, plunders tonight of you, blunders what's left of you, flash of flash can, and now forsooth a nogger among the blankards of this dastard century. You have become of twosome twee minds. <laughs> wow. Foreign nest gods, hidden and discovered. Nay, condemned fool. Anarch, ego arc, <laughs> hierarchy arc. You have reared your disunited kingdom on the vacuum of your own most intensely doubtful soul. Do you hold yourself then for some god in the manger, Shehohem, that you will neither serve nor let serve, pray nor let pray? Wow. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Thank you. Oh, so I uh, read that. I just feel <laughs> enlivened. <laughs> yes, no, hearing it the third time today. Just yes, loving right. it. Loving it. So you're going to tell us, if you can, why... Um, you like this so well I, I think it so. it's um it's the whole this is called the Shem section so there's this this whole chapter which is about the brothers back and forth and I particularly like it because I can understand it <laughs> for one thing better than some of the chapters but it to me it just has all this energy in it and the words are so much fun so even though you may not understand all of them you can get a sense of what's being said. You could get a sense of the wordplay. Uh, God in the manger is dog in the manger. Wow! And, and let us pray instead of let us pray. Wow! What? A, what? There's so much meaning in that. There's so much fun in it, as and you exactly. would say. Exactly. Before so, we find the meaning, it is so much. Let us pray. That's and they and and which praying does. It's like the truth of praying. Let us open up your soul. Mm -hmm. and wow. find out what's going on inside. Well, and to me, personally, you know, there's something in the song, lots of fun at Finnegan's Wake, and that's what this is for me. So it's enlivening, it's vibrant, it's energetic, it's fun, 
Um, sometimes I don't get some of the puzzle pieces and then I ask Tim or Michael. Mm -hmm. But this to me is just something that, that wakes me up. And I don't yeah. mean that as a pun intended, I mean it as an unintended pun. Yeah, <laughs> but it does wake up. That's why it's called that first yeah. one of the puns. It, it wakes you wake up. up. To it's funny, it's a dream, it's a dream and it wakes you up. That's right. The dreaming wakes you up. So this I like and it, and it really is making fun of the brother whose morality was was so dichotomous with uh, Joyce, who was an artist and um, not very practical. In fact, once when his brother gave him money for food for the family, he went out and bought his wife a scarf. And for some reason, his wife was deeply unappreciative of this <laughs> because <laughs> the she family was needed food. <laughs> right. so he wasn't a good manager. So this is what this is all about. Could we, could we offer to, to NSA um, that motto that they could have, let us pride? Let us pride. <laughs> you mean the current state of affairs? Yes. That, yes. That, that, you know, listening, <laughs> to, listening to all our emails. And, and, they could, and then they could and just say, we're just quoting Joyce. Yes, we're, we, we've been moved by Joyce. Right. So, so I'm an enthusiast. Well, so would you mind reading that once more? We're just going to get a feel of it. Okay. We'll move up and I'd we'll love move. it. Let me see. It is looking pretty black against you, we suggest, Shivavik. You will need all the elements of the river to clean you over it all. And a fortifying Pope's priest power bull of a tender to Booth. Let us pry. We thought, would, and did. You were bred, fed, fostered and fattened from holy childhood up in this two Easter island on the pie jaw of hilarious heaven and roaring the other place, plunders to night of you, blunders what's left of you, flashes flash can, and now, forsooth, a nogger among the blankards of this dastard century. You have become of twosome twee minds, Foreign est gods, hidden and discovered, nay, condemned fool. Anarch, ego arc, hierarchy arc, you have reared your disunited kingdom on the vacuum of your own most intensely doubtful soul. Do you hold yourself then for some god in the manger, she who am, that you will neither serve nor let serve, pray nor let pray? And of course, at that last line reminds me of Stephen Dedalus in Portrait of the Artist, which was, of course, about Joyce, um, not un unwilling to pray at his dying mother's bedside. And so he would ne neither pray nor let pray. Wow. So that, again, it, it, to me, the themes, and I feel familiar with Joyce because he's so thematic. So even when I don't understand something, I can find a theme and feel at home. It's reformed Catholicism, that's what I think. <laughs> it's a new way to be a happy Catholic. And Tim O'Hearn has also picked a passage or two. Okay, so uh, I wanted to follow up on that theme of wordplay. And um, to help illustrate it, many years ago I uh, did an illustrated version of the first chapter of Finnegan's Wake. This was back in the 80s. But uh, what I wanted to choose from it was the hundred letter thunder word, which has captured the imagination of a lot of people who have read uh, Finnegan's Wake. And uh, this is the illustration, and you can see from it, if you can't read the words, you can at least see the lightning. And the highlighted letters are uh, words for thunder in various obscure languages. Now, how did he use this? Uh, at this point, Tim Finnegan of the song Finnegan's Wake has just fallen off the ladder, and he's crap after maybe bouncing off a number of the rungs of the ladder, maybe one of them broke, we hear a terrible crack, and then all hell breaks loose and it's, the noise gets louder and louder, he hits the ground, setting off all lots of reverberations. So I'll just read the hundred letter thunder word to you and listen for the, um, the person losing the footing and hitting various rungs just before the big crash. Ba-ba-ba-dal-garag-ta-kamina-ron-kon-bron-ton-ron-ton-ton-ron-ans-kan-tu-hu-hur-den-ter-nook. 
Wow. <laughs> and, those, and those are all words for thunder in different languages. Yes. Yeah. Garak, yeah. Kaminar, Toner, Tovaran, Danska, Thornuk, and there are other ones. And he's doing what, what he usually does. Joyce was very afraid of thunder. Yes, the story is that he would hide under his bed as a grown man. Uh, I think he was living in Zurich, and Zurich has tremendous thunderstorms. Hemingway made fun of him. <laughs> For that reason? Yeah, he talked about it. A movable piece where he kind of tried to, you know, talk, talk down about everybody. <laughs> and the other idea, too, is that um, in the language of Finnegan's Wake, uh, some of the theory behind it is from Vico, the um, early sociologist. Um, uh, Italian, I believe, from the 1600s? I think so. Around yes, that time. Maybe 17. And he had a theory of uh, stages of, of humankind's development. And the first one had to do with the birth of language. It was very uh, poetic. And the idea was that um, these creatures that had no voice, no, no speech of their own, were frightened by the thunder of the gods. So during a lightning storm, they would crouch in their caves for protection and this would create a little society of these frightened creatures and maybe through mimicry of that loud thunderclap uh, language was born. So this was a theory that Joyce wove into Finnegan's Wake over and over again. I have a friend of mine who's wonderfully strong at most, he, when he gets angry it's more powerful than anyone I, I've ever met. So this might be wonderful for him. So he thunders? He thunders. Yeah. I mean, when, he's, when he is angry, I, I feel like someone's kicked, literally, literally, I feel, oh, yeah, kicking actually. me. So it's not giving rise to speech in you at that point. <laughs> <laughs> he's going back to the source. Yes, yeah, so I feel that. <laughs> right. That's wonderful. Maybe we can, if we want to change the world, let's get that thunder. Yes, Bernie Shrine. Yes. <laughs> Don't encourage them like that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was very nice. Would you like to do your, we, we have um, still a lot of time. I'd love to you to do your second one. Okay, so the second one, again, it's a wordplay. It's a little more complex. Do you want to put this on the close cam? Uh, oh, Pamela I, could hold this up. I would be happy to do it. And let's see, this is the first time we're doing this. Okay, let's see if it works. Uh, we can't really it. see it. No. Okay, well, I'll just, I'll right. just describe it. Right, I move it closer. I can, I'm allowed to stand up, am I? Oh, okay. Do you want to try that? Let's see. Does this work any better? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Oh, so if you hold it. High tech. Okay. Hi. Oh, let me see if I can hold it steady now. So this is an illustration of the last chapter of Finnegan's Wake. And in, in the last chapter, the sun seems to be rising. The dream is dissipating. And that first figure you see up there is uh, in reference to Tefmut. So uh, Tefmut is not described specifically as that in the text. You'll see it in line five there is deaf mute, which could also be interpreted as deaf mute. But Tefmut is an Egyptian goddess who carried the earth, the world egg on her head. Um, and so that's what inspired the drawing there uh, for this text. But the reason I bring that up is because we get a sense that there's an Egyptian motif here on this page or in this text. And then we get a number of words that sound Egyptian. So uh, if you look down at the next line, of the word of nuas. So somebody's the carrying of the word of nuas. Well, that sounds sort of Egyptian. And the night of making mess to cuddle up in a cuddle pot. Well, mess is an unusual word. It's not English for sure. And then we get pu nuset, which sounds very Egyptian. So we've, we have that theme, but those first two are very suspect, nuas, with a little bit of familiarity with wake, you see Sean spelled backwards there. And if you look at the, then you're cued to look at the next one, mess. Well, mess is Shem spelled backward. So these are fake Egyptian words. <laughs> then we come to Mpu Nuset. And we're already looking for words backwards now. So what I want to introduce is the idea that if, this, if you're reading Finnegan's Wake with the book facing north, and the sun's rising in the east, the first letters to be visible would be the words to uh, the letters to the right of any word. And so if we read it backwards, sure enough, it says the sun up, not Punuset. Wow. Okay, now we're looking for... The, so what we can make fun, we, we can spell words backward and pretend that they're Egyptian gods. <laughs> exactly. Can, Maybe that's and if I was an Egyptian god, 
I'd be so happy. I'd come back and help. <laughs> someone's oh, someone's making me a fun person. No one's interested in too many people in ISIS anymore. <laughs> exactly. If I fell backwards. Wow. Maybe I can get back into into the world. So we have Pudusat, Lord of Risings. Again, that Egyptian god feeling. Lord of Risings in the yonder world of Ntemplet. Well, what the heck is Ntemplet? Well, let's try to read it backwards. And it looks doesn't look English. Nupumatun. But how about French? Nil pa matin. Wow. So there's some letters missing, some vowels, but nil pa matin means not yet morning. You can say the dedication Tim had to figure this out. <laughs> I had help. Yeah, of <laughs> and then the next word, top, looks very Egyptian, but now we're cued to backwards, and of course it's fot, which is light itself. Oh my. So top, triumphant, speaketh. So the, the sun rises. Oh, it's very beautiful. It's done lyrically. Yeah, the language is fantastic, even yeah, without... He said, was a singer once. Do you want to read it, Michael? Oh, no, I'd love you to read it. Thank you. Much as I'm tempted to. Right. So, the ever sower of the seeds of light to the cold old souls that are in the damnatory of Defmut after the night of the carrying of the word of Nuos and the night of making mess to cuddle up in a cuddle pot. Pu Nuset, Lord of Risings in the yonder world of Ntamplin, Pope Triumphant, speaketh. Oh my. So it has a sort of incantatory feel oh, to it's it. It's quite beautiful. It's just so beautiful, as Pamela would say. Pamela, would you kind of want to come up and read this for us too? No, thank you very much. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tim no. did a beautiful job. Okay, Tim, one more time to show so, uh, uh, Columbia and take it in even more. Okay. This is like reading the, when you read the Bible, it's something called Le, Lex, Lectura Divina, which means you read the same passage again and again and take it deeper and deeper in. And Joyce would be happy that we're doing that. Okay. The ever sower of the seeds of light to the cold old souls that are in the dimnatory of Defmut, after the night of the carrying of the word of Nuos, and the night of making mess to cuddle up in a cuddle pot, who knew set, Lord of Risings in the yonder world of Ntantlin, top triumphant speaketh. Wow, speaketh when you're in a cuddling in a cuddle pot. <laughs> I wish that to all of us, these are prayers, thank that's, you, Tim. That's exactly how I feel when the alarm rings. <laughs> <laughs> and Pamela, Pamela has another pass. Oh, we're going to go back to all of us. I'm learning this technology. Look at this. Oh, Michael, look. you are so good. Look. <laughs> so, um, uh, Pamela, we're going to, we have um, three and a half minutes, and it's going to give us another passage she loves from Finnegan's Way can tell us a little why she likes it. Well, one of the things that I love about Joyce is that he can change voice and tone and rhythm into the feminine, um, and he just kind of slides into it. And so uh, in the same chapter that I read where the two sons are kind of having it out with each other, the tone changes, and all of a sudden we are with and talking about Anna Olivia Pluribel, who is the, the female principal here and the mother. And she says, O oh, me lonely son, ye are forgetting me, that our turf brown mummy is a common, alpila, beltila, stiltila, deltila, running with her tidings, dodging by a bit of bog, rapid shooting round the bends, and a place they call it Blessington, and slipping sly by Sally Noggin, as happy as the day is wet. Wow. Babbling, bubbling, chattering to herself, deluthering the fields on their elbows, leaning with a slithering slide of her. Giddy Gaddy, Granny Ma, Gossipatious, and Olivia. Oh my. Oh. Wow. <laughs> And that just always it makes me shivering. love women. This makes me love women in yeah. all their ever pl their plurality. Yes. What is the most about 
the uh, and the bringer of plurabilities. Oh, I might be able to get along with my beloved better. The bring. Oh, here's another <laughs> plurability. Right. When they bring another plurability. Oh yes, you're a bringer of plurabilities. <laughs> and and just the slide and the and the and the rhythm and and the the mm. flow the flow because Anna Olivia is also a river. It is in you know Joyce. Everything is a many layered thing. So it's also the River Liffey, which runs through Dublin. And so you could just feel the, the flow. And I love that about Joyce, that he has many voices. I would love, I'm trying to learn to talk this way. To not talk just from my head, but to mm. talk with the flow. With your and, body. And yes, right? and he does yeah, that. He does that. Whoever, he really well, you're gonna, to you're gonna say, We're going to say goodbye to Columbia and, and Gail and other people watching. Hopefully Michael Ray and Muriel. Um, we have a minute to read this again. Okay, then. Oh, me lonely son, ye are forgetting me, that our turf brown mummy is a-coming. Alpula, Beltula, Siltula, Deltula, running with her tidings, dodging by a bit of bog, rapid shooting around the bends, and a place they call it Blessington, and slipping sly by Sally Noggin, as happy as the day is wet, babbling, bubbling, chattering to herself, Deluthering the fields on their elbows, leaning with their slithering slight of her. Giddy gaddy, granny ma, gossipacious, and Olivia. Oh my, may we all be happy as the, the day, day is, is wet. wet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Um, Michael Max coming on now. With I'll be with him. Uh, we'll be doing our God talk, which is the same as this show, but it's just a different angle. Thank you, Bob. All enthusiasm. Very, very, very.